ਡੀਅਰ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਅੱਜ ਵੇਵ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤਾਲੀ ਮਾਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ એનર્ਜੀ ਯੂਟਿਲਾਈਜ਼ ਕੀਤਿਆਂ ਬਗੈਰ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਤਾੜੀ ਵਜਾਉਣ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ એનર્ਜੀ ਦੀ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਫਾਰਮ ਯੂਜ਼ ਕੀਤੀ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੇਵ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ motion of sound waves bare padange leaves rustling in the wind humming of a bee or a plate crashing on the floor all make sounds sound is an example of mechanical wave especially longitudinal wave i hope you remember that wave is a distribution of energy in space however the energy or disturbance moves in the form of wave without any displacement of medium velocity of propagation of wave is the distance covered by a wave in one second relation for wave velocity is v equal to wavelength upon time period that is lambda upon t or nu lambda sound waves ਏਅਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੇ ਚਾਰੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਮੂਵ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਓਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਵੇਵਸ ਓਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਵਾਟਰ ਦੀਆਂ ਬਣੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਵੇਵਸ ਏਅਰ ਦੀਆਂ ਜਾਂ ਉਸ ਮੀਡੀਅਮ ਦੇ ਪਾਰਟੀਕਲਸ ਦੀਆਂ ਬਣੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਵੇਵ ਟਰੈਵਲ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਕਿਸੇ ਵਸਤੂ ਦੇ ਵਾਈਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਕਰਨ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਵਸਤੂ ਦੇ ਵਾਈਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਹੋਣ ਨਾਲ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਸਰਾਊਂਡਿੰਗ ਮੀਡੀਅਮ ਦੇ ਪਾਰਟੀਕਲਸ ਵਾਈਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਇਹ ਡਿਸਟਰਬੈਂਸ ਮੀਡੀਅਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੇਵਸ ਦੀ ਫਾਰਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੂਵ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਹਰ ਵਾਈਬ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਮੀਡੀਅਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਆਪਣੀ ਵੇਵ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਸਪਰੈਡ ਆਊਟ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਫਾਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਤਲਾਅ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੱਥਰ ਸੱਟਣ ਤੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਸਰਫੇਸ ਤੇ ਵੇਵਸ ਸਪਰੈਡ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਫਾਰਮ ਆਫ એનર્ਜੀ ਵਿਚ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸਰਸ ਅ ਸੈਂਸੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਹੀਅਰਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਈਅਰਸ ਆਓ ਕੁਝ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਕਰਕੇ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਦ ਮਟੀਰੀਅਲ ਰਿਕੁਆਇਰਡ ਫॉर ਥਿਸ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਟਿਊਨਿੰਗ ਫੋਕ ਐਂਡ ਅ ਰਬਰ ਪੈਡ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਟੇਕ ਦ ਟਿਊਨਿੰਗ ਫੋਕ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਟ ਇਟ ਵਾਈਬ੍ਰੇਟਿੰਗ ਬਾਈ ਸਟ੍ਰਾਈਕਿੰਗ ਇਟਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਂਗ ਔਨ ਦ ਰਬਰ ਪੈਡ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗ ਇਟ ਨੀਅਰ ਯਰ ਈਅਰ you will be able to hear a sound now strike again and touch one of its prongs with your finger i can feel that the vibrations die out you can try this and share your experience with your friends in this activity we produce sound by striking the tuning fork we can also produce sound by plucking scratching rubbing blowing or shaking different objects here you can see that plucking of wire produces sound in the same way when the guitar string moves to and fro it produces a series of sound waves when we stick a drum some vibrations are generated in the membrane of the drum it is the vibrating membrane that produces sound here sound is produced in the same way as in case of stretched string when we blow through a flute it also produces sound here sound is produced by vibrating air column in the human being it is the vocal cords which produce sounds in human being sound is produced by vibrating air column we always hear a humming sound when a bee flies nearby it is the vibration of the wings of the bee that produces a humming sound ki tusi eh note kita ki ina sariyan activities vich sound produce karan layi sanu objects nu vibrate karna penda hai vibration da arth hai 
object the rapid to and fro motion. Even human voice is caused due to vibrations in the vocal cords. Koi bhi source of sound hamesha ek state of vibration vich honda hai. Zyada tar music, vibrating strings, vibrating skins, jam vibrating air columns dwara produce kita janda hai. Siddhe shabda vich sound is vibration. Sound generally ek longitudinal wave hondi hai. Air which molecules sound that travel karan the direction which backward ate forward move kar de han. A sound wave is similar in nature to a slinky wave for a variety of reasons. First, there is a medium which carries the disturbance from one location to another. Second, there is an original source of the wave, some vibrating object capable of disturbing the first particle of the medium. The vibrating object which creates the disturbance could be the vocal cords of a person, the vibrating string and soundboard of a guitar, the vibrating forks of a tuning fork or the vibrating diaphragm of a radio speaker. Third, the sound wave is transported from one location to another by means of particle to particle interaction. All of us are aware that the sound is produced by vibrating objects. The matter or substance through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. As such, sound can pass through many different substances. In fact, it requires the presence of a medium. Sound cannot travel through vacuum. In general, the mechanical vibrations that can be interpreted as sound are able to travel through all forms of matter such as solid, liquid and gas. The matter that supports the sound is called the medium. Sound moves through a medium from the point of generation to the listener. When an object vibrates, it sets the particles of the medium around it vibrating. The particles do not travel all the way from the vibrating object to the ear. A particle of the medium in contact with the vibrating object is first displaced from its equilibrium position. It then exerts a force on the adjacent particle. As a result of which, the adjacent particle gets displaced from its position of rest. After displacing the adjacent particle, the first particle comes back to its original position. This process continues in the medium throughout the entire medium with each particle interacting and causing a disturbance of its nearest neighbors. The disturbance created by a source of sound in the medium travels through the medium and not the particles of the medium. Air, sound they travel currently most common medium hai. Sound, liquids ate solids which we travel kar di hai. Maslan, water, wood, brick, iron adi. But sound can not travel through vacuum. Ao, twanu ohi purana bell jar experiment dikhai. In the bell jar experiment, we keep an alarm clock in a glass jar which is connected to a vacuum pump. When the alarm sounds, we hear the sound clearly. But when the vacuum pump starts, the air is pumped out of the bell jar. The sound starts diminishing and ultimately no sound is heard. The experiment clearly demonstrates that a material medium, such as air, is needed for transmission of the sound waves. 
You can listen to the sound again the moment the air is pumped into the bell jar. This shows that the sound cannot travel through vacuum. In particular, sound means those vibrations composed of frequencies capable of being detected by ears. Sound is transmitted through gases and liquids as longitudinal waves. However, through solids, it can be transmitted as both longitudinal wave and transverse wave. Do you know why sound waves are called mechanical waves? Well, since sound wave is a disturbance which propagates through a medium, therefore a sound wave is called as mechanical wave. One of the important property of the sound waves is the speed of the sound, also known as sonic speed. However, sound the propagation medium the composition at the sound the apne nature te depend kar di hai different frequencies certain substances vichyo zyada aasani naal tur sakdiyan han ate kujh hor frequencies bakiyan nalon kujh extra travel kar lendiyan han for example ek musical concert vich bass drum di thumping dujiyan sounds nalon pehla sun jandi hai sound propagates through a medium at a finite speed in general the speed of sound depends upon the stiffness or the elasticity of the medium and the density of the medium experiments have proved that the speed of sound decreases when we go from solid to gaseous state thus velocity of sound in solids is more than the velocities in liquids which is more than the velocities in gases since the sound wave motion can be transverse as well as longitudinal let us have a look on the mathematical formulae for the speeds of transverse and longitudinal waves in different media the velocity of propagation of a transverse wave on a stretched string can be obtained by using the relation v equal to under root t by m where t is the tension in the string and m is the linear mass density of the string or in other words m is the mass per unit length of the string here you can notice that the velocity of a transverse wave propagating along a string depends only on the tension and linear mass density of the string it does not depend upon frequency of wave on the other hand the velocity of transverse waves in a solid is v equal to under root eta by rho where eta is the modulus of rigidity and rho the density of the material of the medium can you suggest a formula for speed of longitudinal wave motion in a solid medium the speed of longitudinal waves is v equal to under root k plus 4 by 3 eta upon rho where k is the bulk modulus eta the modulus of rigidity and rho the density of the material of the medium but when the solid is in the form of a long bar the speed of longitudinal waves through the bar becomes v equal to under root y upon rho where y is the young's modulus and rho the density of the material of the rod on the other hand in liquids and gases that is in fluids the velocity of longitudinal wave is v equal to under root k upon rho where k is the bulk modulus and rho is the density of the medium we know that the sound travels through gases in the form of longitudinal waves therefore the formula for the speed of longitudinal wave in fluid that is v equal to under root k upon rho is also 
the expression for velocity of sound in a gaseous medium. It was Newton who concluded that velocity of longitudinal waves through any medium, solid, liquid or gas, depends upon the elasticity and the density of the medium. Newton gave the formula V equal to under root E upon rho, where E is the coefficient of elasticity of the medium and rho, of course, is the density of the undisturbed medium. However, Newton predicted this relation to calculate the velocity of sound in a gas. Since a gas has only one type of elasticity, that is bulk modulus, therefore, the velocity of sound in a gas is V equal to under root K upon rho. We know that the sound travels through a gas in the form of compressions and rarefactions. Newton assumed that when sound travels in a gaseous medium, the changes taking place in the medium are isothermal in nature. Hence, According to Newton, the temperature of the gaseous medium remains constant when sound travels through it. In other words, there is change in pressure and volume of the gas. During the compression, heat is produced which is conducted away or lost to the surrounding medium. Similarly, during the rarefactions, cooling is produced and the heat is conducted in or gained from the surrounding medium. Therefore, the temperature remains constant. Using coefficient of isothermal elasticity, that is Ki, Newton's relation for velocity of sound in gases becomes V equal to under root Ki upon rho. Since the coefficient of isothermal elasticity, Ki is equal to change in pressure upon change in volume by original volume. Mathematically, Ki is equal to minus dp upon dv by v. Here, negative sign shows that when pressure is increased, volume decreases. We consider a certain mass of the gas with P initial pressure of the gas and V initial volume of the gas. We know that under the isothermal conditions, PV remains constant. Then on differentiating both sides, we get PDV plus V dP equal to 0 or minus dP upon dV by V is equal to P. Hence, Newton's relation for velocity of sound in gases becomes V equal to under root P upon rho. If we calculate the speed of sound in air at NTP, we can measure it as equal to 280 meter per second. On the other hand, the experimental value of the velocity of sound in air at normal temperature and pressure is 332 meter per second. This shows that there is a difference of about 16 percent in between the experimental and theoretical values of velocity of sound in air. So, the value calculated on the basis of Newton's formula was less than the experimental value by about 16 percent. Such a large error could not be possible due to any experimental error. Though Newton proposed a number of arguments to explain this discrepancy, but none of them was satisfactory. A French mathematician, Laplace, successfully explained the exact cause of the discrepancy between the theoretical and experimental values of the velocities of sound. He suggested that Newton's assumption was wrong. Laplace suggested that when sound waves are propagated through air, the changes in pressure and volume of the gas 
are not isothermal but adiabatic as the velocity of sound in a gas is very large. He pointed out that the pulses of compression and rarefaction follow one another very quickly and the gaseous medium is a bad conductor of heat. Therefore, the heat produced at a compression cannot be conducted away to the surrounding medium as there is no time left for exchange of heat amongst themselves or with the surroundings. Similarly, heat cannot be conducted during the rarefaction. Since during propagation of sound, no exchange of heat is possible and the heat contents of a compression or of a rarefaction remain constant. Therefore, the process is adiabatic in nature. Therefore, Laplace corrected the Newton's formula for the speed of sound by using coefficient of adiabatic elasticity of the gases, Ka in place of Ki. Hence, the relation for velocity of sound in gases becomes V equal to under root Ka upon rho. To measure the value of Ka, let us consider certain mass of the gas with P as the initial pressure and V as the initial volume of the gas. Here again, Ka is equal to minus dP upon dV by V. We know that under adiabatic conditions, P V to the power gamma is constant, where gamma is the ratio of two specific heats. Then on differentiating both sides, we get gamma P V to the power gamma minus 1, dV plus V to the power gamma dP equal to 0 or minus dP upon dV by V is equal to gamma p. Hence, Laplace's relation for velocity of sound in gases becomes V equal to under root gamma p upon rho. The value of gamma depends on the nature of the gas. For air, it is 1.41. If we calculate the speed of sound in air, at normal temperature and pressure, we find it is equal to 332.5 meter per second. This value of speed in sound in air at normal temperature and pressure is in close agreement with the corresponding experimental value. Various factors like density, pressure, temperature, humidity, etc affect the speed of sound in a gaseous medium. Let us now discuss the various factors affecting the speed of sound in a gaseous medium. The velocity of sound in a gaseous medium is given as V equal to under root gamma p upon rho. It is clear that the velocity of sound in a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the gas. That is, on increasing the density of the medium, speed of sound decreases. For example, if we consider two gases which have the same value of gamma, let their densities be rho 1 and rho 2 respectively. If the two gases are at the same pressure P, then the ratio of the speeds of sound in two gases are V1 by V2 equal to square root of rho 2 by rho 1. The presence of water vapors in air changes its density. That is why the velocity of sound changes with humidity of air. The presence of water vapor reduces the density of air. Therefore, sound travels faster on a rainy day than on a dry day. It means greater the humidity of air, higher will be the speed of sound. The velocity of sound in a gaseous medium 
is given as V equal to under root gamma P upon rho. It shows that the velocity of sound in a gas is directly proportional to the square root of pressure of the gas. But it is not correct. Do you know why? We know that according to the standard gas equation for 1 gram molecule of a gas, PV is constant. Since V is equal to m by rho, where m is the molecular weight of the gas, therefore P m by rho is also a constant. Since m is a constant quantity, it means ratio of pressure and density is also a constant. It means even if pressure P changes, the factor P by rho remains constant. It is because when the pressure is changed, then density also changes in the same ratio so as to keep the factor P by rho unchanged. Hence, velocity of sound is independent of the pressure of the gas, provided temperature remains constant. We know that according to the standard gas equation for 1 gram molecule of a gas, PV is equal to RT, that is P is equal to RT by V and the speed of sound can be rewritten as V equal to under root gamma RT upon rho V. Since rho V is equal to the molecular weight of the gas M, hence the relation for the speed of the sound becomes V equal to under root gamma RT upon M. Since for a given gas R gamma and M are constants, therefore speed of sound is directly proportional to the square root of the absolute temperature of the gas. If T1 and T2 are the two different temperatures of a gaseous medium, then the ratio of the speeds of sound in two gases that is V1 by V2 is equal to square root of T1 by T2. That is why sound travels faster on a hot day than on a cold day. It is clear that from the formula for velocity of sound, there is no involvement of frequency or wavelength. Therefore, sound of any frequency or wavelength travels through a given medium with the same velocity. Similarly, there is no effect of amplitude also on the velocity of sound. But if the amplitude is too large, the velocity of sound slightly increases. The speed of the sound is also affected by the speed of the wind. However, there is no effect of wind if the wind blows perpendicular to the direction of sound in respect of listener. But if the wind is blowing with speed w at an angle theta with respect to the direction of sound, then the resultant speed of the sound v dash is equal to v plus w cos theta. If the wind blows in the direction of the propagation of sound, then the resultant velocity becomes V plus W and the sound will be traveling faster. On the other hand, if the wind blows in the opposite direction of the propagation of sound, then the resultant velocity becomes V minus W and will be traveling slower. So, children, now we come to the end of today's topic. Let us summarize our today's topic. Sound is a form of energy that produces sensation of hearing in our ears. Sound wave is transported from one location to another by means of particle to particle interaction. The matter through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. 
sound cannot travel through vacuum. Sound is transmitted through gases and liquids as longitudinal waves and through solids as longitudinal as well as transverse waves. Laplace modified the Newton's formula for the speed of sound as V equal to under root gamma P upon rho. So now we are at the end of this topic. Here is a quick test for you to find out how much have you actually absorbed. The first question goes like this. Name the type of sound wave propagating through liquids. The answer is longitudinal waves. The next question is name the type of sound wave propagating through solids. And the answer is transverse waves. मैं आस रखती हाँ कि तुसी सारिया ने आज का ये पाठ ना सिर्फ आनंदपूर्वक सुनया होगा बल्कि इस समझिया भी होगा टॉपिक पर ध्यान देने लिये धनवाद सी यू अगैन इन द नैक्सट क्लास विद समथिंग डिफरेंट